Tonight, off and running, candidates revealed for the upcoming council elections across the Spencer Gulf. And community outrage quells in Wyala as new owners take over the vacant cafe on the foreshore. From our seven Spencer Gulf studios, your nightly news with Madeline Kerr begins now. Good evening, thanks for joining us. The campaigns for the South Australian local elections are officially underway. In Port Augusta, incumbent Mayor Brett Benbow spoke first to Seven Spencer Golf News as he launched his bid for re-election. Just two candidates for the mayoralty of Port Augusta were declared after the deadline on Tuesday afternoon. For the position of Mayor, Lindley Shine and Brett Benbow. Mayor Brett Bembo will face Councillor Lindley Shine in what's expected to be a tough contest. Look, I'm excited about running again as the Mayor. I've enjoyed my last term doing what I've done. Um, in the background, a lot of things have been done in the scenes that people don't see and hear of. Um, I'll continue to run as and work as I have. Now both candidates have several weeks to convince the public they're the right person for the job. Continued relationships with both levels of government and our businesses and particularly our youth in Port Augusta is one of my three focuses that we need to look at and also renewable energy that will continue on into the future but we also need to work how we can get something from those projects just not having based in Port Augusta. The mayor election is expected to get heated as Mayor Benbow won his first term in office by a razor thin margin of just a few hundred votes and everyone will count. Daniel Bizarro, 7 Spencer Golf News. Jumping across to Wyala now, where a staggering 19 candidates will fight it out for the role of area councillor. The large number of nominees seeing the South Australian Electoral Commission follow strict rules to ensure a fair ballot paper. Voting slips at the ready. The South Australian Electoral Commission last night oversaw the assigning of candidate positions on their respective ballot papers. The process taking longer in some cities than others, with Wyala seeing 19 nominees put their hands up to take one of only nine councillor seats in addition to the two candidates running for mayor. Candidate positions were drawn randomly to ensure overall fairness. As you can see, it's a privacy thing, so we, we fold up the paper so nobody can see the names. I, I shape the box and then they're drawn out and, and that's recorded. From that, we send that off to the Electoral Commission in Adelaide. Now, with nominations closed and the ballot paper all drawn up, the Electoral Commission says the next key date will be the mail-out of ballot materials on the 14th of October. And sending ballot papers out by post to every one of those eligible voters uh, in mid-October. So it's a pretty big uh, logistical exercise for us. Organisers stress that voting is the best way to ensure community values stay front and centre. Really, uh, you know, your local government is probably in, in some ways more important than, you know, state le what, what your local council can do for you and your local government. Uh, so I encourage everyone to, to go out and vote. It's really easy. You get your ballot paper sent to you. All you need to do is fill them in and send them back to us. Uh, and that way you're making sure that you're having a say in your local community. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. It won't be long until Wyala locals can kick back on the sand with some fine food, with a local operator finally selected to run the beach cafe. The City Council now working with the businesses to finalise and implement the fit-out for the foreshore pod facility. Treats by the beach just in time for summer. Wyala City Council announcing local business A Little Fried will take over as operator of the foreshore cafe. After an extended consultation period, the business is excited to breathe life into the pod facility which has laid dormant since its installation in May. It's going to be scary, but I think we can handle the challenge. Um, really looking forward for a service to the community and the visitors that come through to Wyala. We really need to build on all those visitors who are making their way here, as well as the locals, and give them a place to really congregate and enjoy what is the jewel of their town. Robbie and Michelle are no stranger to providing Wyala with great food, operating five takeaway shops throughout the city already. Both in food for quite a few years, we've had the Wyala Football League for seven years, uh, Speedway for three years and now we currently have a little fried for two and a half years. The pair has also just opened Flinders Takeaway at One Stop Shopping Centre and been picked to run the renovated airport cafe. 
They say the beachside establishment will see the return of classic meals locals have been missing. We'll be offering fish and chips and just your normal beachy sort of foods, ice creams, coffee, cake. Inside dining as well as outside and hopefully down the track we could possibly look at beer gardens and areas outside for people to enjoy out there. The competitive process we used to select the operators, they really demonstrated that they understand the Wyala community and what they were looking for in this location and they're very, very passionate. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Port Lincoln's much-anticipated foreshore developments are well and truly underway, with the construction of the play space expected to be completed in the coming months. Now a local Aboriginal arts group has been selected to design and create artwork for the space. The first phase of the Port Lincoln's foreshore development looking promising, with the nature play space slowly taking shape. Here behind us is, um, is uh, all the infrastructure is in place and they're building upon that now. Um, we're using local contractors where we can for that particular uh, uh, construction area. A project Council have had in the pipeline for over three years. Now things are coming into fruition. We've got about $7.2 million for the foreshore itself. Just behind me the play space will, uh, will incorporate about $1.6 million and um, it will be quite a, uh, an innovative and new area for, uh, for the city itself. First Nations artists are set to contribute to the space, designing and creating artworks highlighting local Indigenous stories. The local Aboriginal arts group Yao Gu, um, led up by Emma and Vera Richards, uh, who are going to be doing some interpretive work uh, on the play space behind us. So the types of things we'll be looking at there are sculptures, painted areas and mosaics. The space will be multi-generational, having something for both the young and old. Construction is due to be completed in November, with Phase 2 set to begin after that. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, childcare workers in Broken Hill stand in solidarity with their striking peers across the state. And the new job program employing more people across the Mid-North. Welcome back. More than a thousand childcare educators across the country walked off the job today. Staff in Broken Hill choosing to continue their duties while standing in solidarity with their industry colleagues. It's not only school teachers who are fed up. Early childhood educators feeling the strain just as much. And they want the federal and state governments to listen. We are early learning educators and teachers, not childcare workers. This is something that seems to be, needs to change and we need to be valued for our qualifications. There are teachers in the industry who are earning 30% less than primary school teachers. The pay disparity, one of the reasons why the profession is struggling to recruit more educators. Any other industry would not be putting up with that, so it's time that we come together and our voices are heard. It's more than pay, it's about our conditions and recognition. Childcare centres in Broken Hill remained open for the day, so the community would not be disrupted. They are also calling for the community to stand with them. A lot of our emergency services don't have family to send their children or they can't take the day off. So we've stayed open to support our families and now we're wanting our families to support us. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. Police in Port Lincoln are investigating a car break-in on Washington Street after a window was smashed just before 5pm on Monday. It's alleged the perpetrators stole a handbag from inside the car containing a wallet with cash inside. The purse was later located on the Flinders Highway and returned to the owner. Police are encouraging anyone with information about the incident to contact Crime Stoppers and are reminded to lock it or lose it. The care and support workforce is one of Australia's largest and fastest growing sectors. And now the Mid-North Local Jobs Program is shining a light on what a career in this area could look like. There hasn't been a better time to kickstart your career as a care and support worker. Yeah, the care sector is one of the biggest employers we've got in the region and consistently has the most job vacancies advertised um, and there's a whole suite of different subsectors. Lisa says people don't realise that there are many subcategories within the sector, including aged care, disability work and social care. 
which include a diverse range of roles, from gardening and social outings to providing health care. You know, one of the things we're doing are these meet the employer sessions so that people can actually come and hear from employers firsthand um, what it's like to work in the sector, the different types of jobs, um, you know, how rewarding it is. Those who are interested are strongly encouraged to attend these events, taking place throughout the region, where you will be given the opportunity to ask questions and connect directly with those already in the industry. Given the huge demand, the government is also stepping in and providing funding to support those in the sector someone that just wants to uh, get their foot in the door and maybe get their certificate three um, or someone that's already working in the sector and maybe wants to upskill. To find out whether you have the care factor visit local jobs program Mid North Essays Facebook page. Annabelle Francis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. Port Augusta's image problem addressed by council's prospective candidates and Port Lincoln Council taking suggestions on how the airport could be improved. Welcome back. Aside from the mayoral elections, voters in Port Augusta will have to choose from 13 candidates for the City Council. High rates and the antisocial behaviour dogging the city, two of the major election issues. Several council candidates were present when the official list and ballot paper order was announced at Port Augusta City Council. Thirteen people officially running for the nine available seats with school teacher Michael McKinley nabbing the top spot on the ballot paper. I was amazed actually. I'm, I'm really lucky to be here, let alone be on the one spot. But uh, It's just a great pleasure and I, I'm looking forward to it with great excitement about what can be done for this wonderful town that we have here and the region. Incumbent councillor Sonny Singh is recontesting and the main issue for him and others is the antisocial behaviour. Yeah, my main concern would be the antisocial behaviour which we are currently facing and uh, the other few things we have to um, do some financial changes where we can look after our rate payers because rates are obviously the really highest in, in Port Augusta. We need to focus on this, it's very important. We're coming into the warmer months and my finger is not off the pulse. As I did in my, when I was in council, I requested both governments to step up and, and help our town and rate pay shouldn't pay for that service. And I'm waiting for to see that to happen. So hopefully that'll come to fruition before we get to into the hotter months. The council is urging voters to return their ballot papers as soon as possible to avoid their votes missing out on the return deadline of 5 p.m. on November 10. Daniel Pizarro, 7 Spencer Golf News. The District Council of the Lower Air Peninsula is asking travellers to fill out a survey to see how the Port Lincoln Airport can be improved. The largest regional airport in the state knows there's always room for growth. It's the soaring survey asking travellers important questions. A chance for the community to have their say on ways in which the airport can improve its operations. It's really important um, as the owner of the owner operator of the largest regional airport in South Australia to actually be sure that we're giving the traveller what they really want and need, as well as businesses within the area. The 14 question survey highlighting why people travel to Port Lincoln and what travellers require when flying. Passenger numbers were hit hard during the pandemic, however, people are starting to get the travel bug once again. We were hit badly by COVID. Uh, so we went from, you know, amazing passenger numbers to zero, you know, overnight. So it was really quite substantial. But we're really pleased to be able to keep all businesses that are, con uh, are currently running out of the airport. Thanks to some state funding, the airport is set to upgrade the lighting along the runway. The mayor saying there is potential to open up more flights to and from the airport. Obviously, uh, route is obviously something that it often... Um, people come and talk to us about, you know, can we go from Port Lincoln to Melbourne and those sorts of things. Gathering this information early gives us an opportunity to talk and work with airlines. Those who partake in the questionnaire will also go in the running to win a $500 flight voucher. So people can be a part of the survey um, by either uh, click, clicking on the QR code that's at the airport. Uh, alternatively, on our Facebook page, there is a link to, uh, to that survey. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break, our weekly Fuel Watch segment comparing petrol prices across the Spencer Gulf. And we'll have the weather details with Alex Sykes.
Welcome back to 7 Spencer Golf News. It's been a mixed week at the fuel pumps with some prices staying low while others have jumped up. Joshua Mercer has this week's Fuel Watch. Things aren't as bleak as they could be with a handful of green arrows on the board. But prices at the Bowser are starting to head north. Firstly, we have unleaded prices. And as always, Kadena has the lowest price in the region, sitting at $1.69.8, 0.1% down from last week. Those in the Silver City are paying the highest yet again. The positive is that it's still under $2 a litre, though it only went down by 0.7%. Motorists in Port Lincoln are paying the cheapest next to Kadena at $1.72. Why Alla comes in next, as there has to be a third place in there somewhere. Consumers in the Steel City are paying close to $1.76 a litre. Only half a cent separates Port Augusta and Port Pirie's prices. But as always, the lowest price at the moment can be found at the Metro Pumps, with Adelaide having a massive drop in price, going from $1.85 all the way down to $1.51 per litre. If you drive a diesel vehicle, you may want to look away or cover your eyes, as it is nothing but red arrows this week. Like in unleaded, Broken Hill drivers are paying the most at $2.11. Six cents up on last week. Port Pirie has the next dearest diesel prices, up almost 11 cents on last week. It's Port Augusta's turn for the cheapest in the region. Residents there paying $2.05 per litre. And Kadena is the next cheapest at $2.06. Why Alla residents are not far behind Kadena, paying $2.07. Adelaide is once again the reigning and defending champion of prices. Diesel drivers paying two cents above the $2 mark, two cents more than last week. And finally, onto Autogas, and there are a few surprises here. Broken Hill finally gets on the board as the cheapest in the region. Autogas users paying $1.10 per litre. Port Piri comes in second place, sitting at $1.11. 0.9 of a cent separates Waiala and Port Augusta, while people in Port Lincoln are paying the most for Autogas, just under $1.29. The City of Churches has made it a clean sweep on the board, even though there's a red arrow this week, sitting at $0.91 cents per litre. Tune in to Spencer Golf Nightly News next week to see if you get value for money at the pumps. Thanks for that, Josh. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather with Alex Sykes. Alex, some seriously wet weather today. Yeah, not wrong, Maddie. The gauge has got to work out today, that is for sure, especially in Port Augusta. An intense rain bomb fell earlier this afternoon with around 20 millimetres falling in as many minutes. The sudden deluge causing flash flooding around the city, truly a spectacle to be seen. Looking at some of today's temperatures, Port Augusta reached 21 degrees, around 240, but the temperature really did not compare with the sheer amount of rain that fell this afternoon. Residents surely still in shock. While it was its warmest at 153 when it reached 18.5 degrees, 19 degrees in Port Pirie. Looking more broadly at today's weather map, with all that rain around, it certainly wasn't cold. 25 in Cooper PD, 21 in Broken Hill and Woodna, 19 in Kadena and Adelaide. Taking a look at the satellite image now, a low pressure system centred over the bite extends a cold front over the west of South Australia. This front will move eastwards to be over the eastern states early tomorrow. A ridge of high pressure will move over the far west later Friday and then move slowly eastwards over the weekend and early early next week. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Northwesterly winds 10 to 15 knots, turning westerly in the late afternoon, seas around one metre and south to southwesterly swell below a metre. More showers in Port Lincoln, 17 degrees there, showers and 16 in Cleve. Woodna, a rainy and 17 degrees after an after getting down to 7 tonight. Showers in Wala as well between 8 and 19 degrees. Rain increasing around Port Augusta heading for 20 degrees. Kadena showers and set to reach a top of 17 degrees there. 19 degrees in Port Pirie on Thursday. 14 degrees and showers around Clare. And the rain is set to ease around Broken Hill after a possible thunderstorm tomorrow morning. Temperature wise, 19 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now, the rain is set to continue into Friday at most places in our region. 16 in Port Lincoln and Kadena, Port Pirie 
and Woodner both heading for 18 degrees, 19 in Whaler and Broken Hill, meeting in chance of showers in Port Augusta, most likely in the morning, heading for a top of 21. Looking at Saturday's outlook now, and our map is starting to clear up. Showers hanging around Kadena in Port Piri. There will be a medium chance of rain in the morning, heading for a top of 17. 17 in Wyala and Broken Hill as well. 22 in Cooper Pedy, 20 in Port Augusta. Taking our first look at what Sunday is looking like, Port Lincoln and Cooper Pedy can expect some rain at this stage. Partly cloudy everywhere else. Temperatures between 16 and 20 degrees. And that's all the weather from me for tonight, Maddie. I'll see you soon with an update. It's back to you. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Wednesday. I'm Madeline Kerr. From all of us here, thanks for joining us. I'll have updates a little later, but until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.